Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome along to another custom review from us. This time it is all about this machine, the Italian built Spiperi Interplant Weeder, which is imported and distributed throughout the UK by uh, JF Hudson Limited. Now, hopefully, you may have seen a previous video that we did with uh, JF Hudson all about this machine, just a really good sort of product focus piece, got to know the ins and outs of the machine so this time we're actually going to catch up with a few of the customers that have uh, been running these machines uh, basically to find out what they think of it and how they've been getting on with the machine so we're going to start with this guy mr simon cock from kent and he's got a business called uh, delf farm shop and nursery amongst many other things i believe <laughs> yeah, as well yes, yeah yeah so simon i mean we'll start with that i mean just tell us a little bit about your business well we're a small farm shop just outside sandwich in kent we do a bit of our own growing on on site we we, we do a lot of bedding plants and and bits and pieces also a tiny bit of veg runner beans and um cabbage and, and other bits and pieces and stuff um, but our biggest thing we've got into is growing pumpkins which is uh where basically this machine comes into it <laughs> that's it and i mean just tell me about this sort of this pumpkin phenomenon in the uk that well, just seems to have exploded yes. yeah well we've been here seven years and when we first come we bought some pumpkins in and uh just sold them and that and we thought well we've got the land here we'll we grow a few so we done i don't know quarter of an acre something like that and we, we didn't a week later they're gone just just like that just like that just like that so uh, we thought well, we've got something on here and then people were coming to us well can we go out the field and get a pumpkin well, what do you want to go out there for it's muddy <laughs> <laughs> well if you, you really you, want you know <laughs> and, and i thought well if they want to go out there and get the pumpkins then that's great that saves me having to go out there and get them yeah. <laughs> so uh, we, we we grew then an acre and to see how it went and uh yeah, it's fantastic. People turn up, they go out the field with their children, you, you, you know, get a pumpkin, they come back, they're all happy, they're all muddy and that, getting their cars and clear off <laughs> with a pumpkin. They, they and, kind of treat it as a day out yeah, now, it, don't it, they? It, it was great. So, um, so it's just grown we're, and we're now doing six acres of pumpkins. Uh, you, you know, it, it's taken seven years. Uh, that's it's, it. That's unbelievable. Um, and we do, we just, just for ourselves, we don't supply anybody else, no supermarkets or anything like that. It's just purely for ourselves. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's just gone mad. And then, what would you say the main challenges are growing pumpkins in this area? I mean, have you got any sort of specific challenges in this area? Because I would imagine it varies from, you know, site to site around the country. Yeah. Um, Irrigation is, is, is a major thing, especially this last year. It's mm. been very hard because it's been a dry summer, a yeah. very dry summer. So irrigation has been a big problem this year. We've had the number of pumpkins, but we haven't had the size this year. Right. They've, they've been slightly smaller than a football. We, we know we've have had quantity, but it's, it's size yeah. due to irrigation problems right. this year. Um, but the biggest problem is weeds. And do you use this machine exclusively for pumpkins or do you do other, no, other no. crops with we, it? We, we got it for pumpkins, that's all we bought it for, for ourselves. But as I said earlier, I'm, uh, I do a bit of contracting for the local farmer next door. And when he'd see what I brought, he wanted to give it a go. Yeah. And he's a big cauliflower grower, a very, very big cauliflower grower. So we took it um, on, onto his farm and we had a go with one of his tractors on cauliflower and got on really, really well with it. Yeah. Um, this last year, he's just put in a new field of rhubarb and we've used it three times on the rhubarb field this year. Right. So I have used it on other crops, but it is mainly for ourselves for, yeah. for, for pumpkins. And when you're going from crop to crop, different crop types, does it take much setting up different No, I'm quite lucky or? because because next door are using the same wheel widths as us uh, and everything so it literally it fits their tractor it fits my yeah. tractor and I it's set up to 30 inch rows and I haven't got to adjust it that's it you straight so in. yeah if you went to a different farm obviously where they're doing 72s or, or whatever then I'd have to adjust it even more or whatever so before this came along uh, what were you, what were you using before well there's myself my mother and father-in-law now, my father-in-law's early 70s, mother-in-law's late 60s, we were using hand hose. So, we, obviously, we wasn't doing it on the scale that we, we are now. We, we obviously, we've gone up to six acres before we was only growing three acres maximum. 
but to do three acres with a hand hoe, it was taking us two weeks, the three of us. Occasionally I had a friend come and help me as well, yeah. um, if I could talk him into it, but once he'd been out there half hour, I realised you were getting blisters on your hands and how hard it was <laughs> and, and, and everything. Um, he, he soon decided that he had a better things to do. <laughs> So, uh, Paul's just gone, I've yeah, got to go. That's it. He's, he, he's, he's gone, so um, yeah, that's how we was doing it. Right. It's hard to believe that we was out there, hot days as well, yeah. and, and it's not easy. And you get to the end of the field after the two weeks and you'd look at what you've done, and where you started, you think, I've got to start again. We need to go start <laughs> yeah. again. It's taken me two weeks yeah. to do three acres, the three of us, and then we've got to start again, and that's what it was like. Right. That's why originally when I see this machine on eBay, I thought, that's I'm having ideal. That. I've got to have that. And then I missed it. <laughs> so all in all, I mean, growing pumpkins, it is, you know, without mechanisation, it is a very labour intensive yes, crop. It is, yeah. Yeah, because weeds take over. And yeah, the other problem we do find with them is you've only got a window. You've got like four, maybe five weeks at a push to do weeding. Because once they start running, because they send off runners off the plants, yeah. you then can't weed. Right. Because obviously they go out across your rows where you track and then you're running over the plants that are going to produce where the, the, the pumpkins are grown off the runners. Right. So you've only got a short window to get your weeding done as well. Yeah. But if you don't weed, you end up with weeds this high <laughs> and you yeah. can't find the pumpkins. And, you know, so you've got to weed when they're small. Well, well, and the weeds would just eventually overtake the pumpkins and just yes, smother yeah. them. Yeah, well, basically, the problem you get is they don't allow the sun, sunlight in. So when it starts, the, the, the fruit starts to um, ripen up, they stay green. They don't go, they, they don't go orange. And how many times would you go through with the weeder in a season, in a growing um, season? Well, obviously, now, say, it took us three weeks originally by hand. Yeah. We're now down to a day and a half. To do the same, same the job. The equivalent area. Two people. One person on here and the tractor driver. We swap round because obviously it gets boring for the tractor driver. <laughs> <laughs> the tractor driver says, I'm bored. Because <laughs> obviously so you're, you're thinking going... of the other way around. Yeah, but... yeah, yeah. So, um, so, so we, we, we swap round. But yeah, we're down to a day and a half now with the six acres, which is unbelievable. Yeah. Um, so it gives us time to do other, other jobs. And then so, we, we, but we're doing it once a week is what we're doing. Yeah. Over, over, just, just to keep the weed down. Um, you can't completely lose it because like I say, once you've gone through it and then the plant starts running, we are then going out and doing a, still a tiny little bit of hand yeah. weeding because you can't take the machine through there because you're damaging the plant. That's it, yeah. But you can cope with it. It's got to the stage where the plant now starts to spread yeah. and it covers the area where the weed was, so it's not so bad. That's so we it. do have a walk through the field, um, you know, mid-July, just getting the odd one by hand that the machine has missed because obviously you c it gets quite close to the plant, but it's confident sat here as well. <laughs> we have knocked the odd plants out. That's it. <laughs> but it's very good. And what's it like to operate? Because I've seen a few video clips of this and, you know, there's, there looks like there's a bit of intense sort of concentration going on. And I'm not sure <coughs> if I could distinguish weeds from not weeds and I'd be you, smashing. You, 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 you soon know what you've planted. Yeah. You, you, you learn what you've planted <laughs> yeah. uh, and that you know where your weeds are. It has to be a lot of concentration because obviously you want to try and get as close to the plant mm. as possible. But like I said, you can get too close to the plant and you can knock the plant out if you're not careful. Where you, where you bring them in mm. and you get too close, it's spinning around and around like that. And as it comes into the plant, before you know it, you've caught the, a root to the plant and it's thrown the plant out as well. Right. So there, Sounds like you found you, that you, one you, out. You can't, you can't sit there and, and look at the scenery yeah, over there like because you'll knock all your plants <laughs> yeah, out. You yeah. have to concentrate on what you're doing. You have to forget what the tractor driver's doing. Let him just let him do, do that. Do that, like bit, that. And you just have to concentrate on your plants. Right. And that, and that is it. And what's the kind of like the quality of work like the, the actual job that it does what's it look like again depends on how big the weeds are the bigger the weeds are it has to have a little bit more power going through it but we just run on tick over we just have the tractor on tick over and it's enough to knock the weed out providing the weed's small enough but obviously if the weed's slightly bigger it has to go a little bit quicker but yeah it makes a brilliant job leaves them laying on the top then the sun kills the weed off and yeah, yeah. Two, two days later you look down there and once it's all died off and you think well oh, i've done a fantastic good job. job there yeah and what sort of depth do you uh, do you go with it um we to be honest with you we don't let the weeds get that that big so we're only doing about an inch all right, just tickling yeah, yeah, the surface. Yeah, the surface, right. yeah, that's all we do. I, I have, with the rhubarb this year, I took it down to two and a half inches because um, some of the weeds there were a little bit deeper. Um, and it handles it no problem at all. Right. A little bit more power uh, from the PTO and it just it handles it no problem at all. But we don't let our weeds get that, that big. Yeah. Because that's the trouble. Once you see a weed, you need to sort of like, okay, we've got a problem, let's get them out. Um, the longer you leave them, 
then they start spreading. Yeah, uh, you've just got to stay it's, on it's, top it's a, of it's them. It's a harder job, yeah. Right. So basically, so from the moment you plant the plants, you just got to watch that field, get your irrigation in and done. It's normally four weeks, three, four weeks after the planting's done before right. you start weeding. And when would you normally plant pumpkins? We, uh, we, we plant all from seed in the greenhouse, into plugs first. We do our own seeds into plugs. Uh, we do that beginning of May. And we are now planting out very last weekend of May, early June. Uh, and I believe that's a spiperi as well. Yes, this, this year um, we had an old weed uh, planter, sorry, not weeder, we had an old planter um, and it's quite an old, where you sit on a seat, and it's got two wheels and you physically have to put the plant into the ground with your hand and right. hold on to the plant as the tractor goes forward. Right. It's so between, it's like between, this. between your legs, yeah. <laughs> if you let go of it, the ground swallows the plant and it's gone. So you have to hold it and you've got your hand in the ground, <laughs> but it pulls on your back. Yeah. Fantastic piece of kit, obviously back in its day, it's now 60, 70 years old, this piece of kit. I don't actually know what make it is because it hasn't got a name plate on it, but that's what, how we've been planting um, pumpkins until this year. Again, we see JF Hudson now starting to bring in new, new equipment and bits and pieces, and we see he had a um, two row planter. So I, I thought to myself, I thought that looks good. And I've been holding off, holding off. I've spoken to James a couple of times about it, and he's, he sort of like said, you know, you'd be good to have a go with this and have a go. <laughs> Until this year, I see uh, a video of it. It ended up on uh, YouTube, uh, yeah, YouTube uh, of another farm using it. And um, I contacted James and sent him this video. I said, is this one of your planters? He said, yes, it is. I said, fantastic. And they were planting pumpkins. I said, you need to bring that machine down to me. I need to have a go with it. <laughs> you convinced yourself. <laughs> that, 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 that was it. I said, I said, I need that machine. I need to have a go with it. And with that, James organized it and sent it down to me. And I never sent it back. Right, it stayed here. It's still here. I, I, yeah, I said to him, send me an invoice. I'm keeping it. Right, and and it was as simple as that. And that's done a season now, is it? That that's that? done this season, and right. it's a fantastic piece of kit. I'm, yeah. I'm really, really pleased with it. Right, and uh, yeah, what's that? I mean, how's it gone? What's that like to use? And yes, it's a uh, it's, it's a very good piece of kit. Uh, it's a two row planter, and it's got the table that goes around. So you have your plants in um, in trays in the in the plug cells in like a carousel, yeah. which spins around in front of you. You're sat upright like this, so you're not bending over anymore. So all you do is you take the plugs out and you drop them into this turntable that's going around, and they drop down into the floor, into the into the field, and it covers it up as you go along and then you have a nice pretty line of plants behind you and it's very very easy to use again right. two two seats on it two person to do two two rows um and it, it's nicer for the person now that's sat on it instead of getting their hands all, all in the ground yeah. and, and worried about their fingers getting run over by the wheels I bet. Um, they just drop them into the thing and, and again the wife sits on that she loves it <laughs> <laughs> right simon thank you very much for your time that has been absolutely spot on uh thank you for sharing your thoughts no on problem. the uh, yeah. spiperi equipment particularly this uh, this new interplant weeder that you've had for the last couple of years and now the uh, the planter as well so yes. it sounds like you're getting on yep. great guns with it so like I say thank you very much for no sharing problem. your thoughts on these uh, machines hopefully we're going to find out uh, how a couple of other users are getting on with their machines but for now thank you very much for watching